Hello there. This is going to be a guide on my Raider Charge Dash character from the Blight League. This character is pretty fun to play. It's not like the strongest character, but, um, you know, it's fun and smooth and Charge Dash is a unique experience. So I'll go ahead and show some gameplay first, and then I will tell you about the choices I made in the build. Um, I made a whole video about the mechanics of Charge Dash specifically, because it's rather an unusual skill. So if you are curious about the skill, go ahead and check that out, or if you're like thinking about making a Charge Dash build that isn't this specific build, check that out. Um, you can see it's like pretty pretty decent clear, th clear speed. Above all, it's just really smooth and fun to play. That's why I like the skill so much. It's just like... Yeah, it just, it just feels good playing it. Uh, let me go find the boss here. He's also buffed recently, so you know, it's nice. There's boss, okay. So, that's, uh, that's some gameplay. Let's talk about the character. So, um, since Charge Dash doesn't rely so much on attack speed, this is a dual Paradoxica character, and this is an example of basically exactly the Paradoxica that you want, except you want uh, a little bit more elemental penetration if you can get it. Um, I'm also using the perfect form because it gives me... Oh yeah, here, let me show you this. Uh, it gives me captivation chance, so what that looks like is... Let's see, where's some mods? That means I just, I just like, don't take damage. Like, I take damage from spells sometimes. I take damage whenever my flasks are down. But yeah, these mobs just, they just don't hit me. Uh, the fireball hits me, but the rest of the mobs, they're just, like, doing absolutely nothing. So that is because I'm a raider. Raider is pretty defensively strong. Um, yeah, I mean, really, there's not too much to this character. I'm, I'm dealing cold damage because that is... I think probably the most efficient way to scale this character. Like, you could use a deck stacking build if you wanted to. Um, I made this build pretty late, and I don't have that much play time on it, so this is, like, kind of a budget build. Um, but yeah. Uh, perfect form is really nice because it gets us to the all-important um, 33k evasion breakpoint. That's where you get um, it says 73% chance to evade, but Raider has this, this modifier where you have 30% more chance to evade, so, um, and you also have this node that reduces enemy accuracy, which is also not, um, taken into account on the character sheet, so basically that adds up to a 95% chance to evade. To put that in other words, that means that 19 out of 20 enemy attacks don't hit you. Um, that's specifically attack damage but uh, most enemies use attacks. There aren't, like, super many spells. You still need some defenses for spells. But yeah, um, that's like max block and then max block again in terms of how much damage you are uh, avoiding. So it's really strong, and the only investment that I am using to get to that point is this Jade Flask and this Perfect Form, and I also took two notes on the tree. So that's, that's like it. Um, that investment, and then I get 95% chance to evade. Pretty, pretty good. Um, other than that, you can see my flasks are pretty ordinary. I don't even have an instant flask because, yeah, I was, like, really lazy when building this character. Um, my gear is, like, not, you know, not perfect. Um, these boots are pretty good, though. Um, they have the chance to dodge spell hits. So when you have 95% chance to dodge attack hits, you know, then you need to worry about spell damage. And um, that's also why Perfect Form is so nice, because it gives you phase acro without having to spend the points on it. So phase acro plus 12% spell dodge here, plus Avatar of the Veil gives 10% spell dodge here, so you're, you have 50% spell dodge, basically. Um, and you can take that higher, but um, that's, that's good enough in general. Um, I don't have, so I have 35 deaths on the character, but I would say about five of those are after I hit maps. Um, and for most of my time playing this character, I had 4k life. 
So, like, including when I was fighting Phoenix and so on, I had 4k life and a tabula, um, and I only died, like, five times. So I think that's, that's pretty good, you know? Like, if you take an average character and you complete red maps with 4k life, you're probably gonna die more often than that. Um, but Raider is just really, really defensive. Um, Raider also is really smooth to play because it gives you all this movement speed. Um, I took the Onslaught and Phasing nodes. The phasing nodes were buffed recently so that um, they give you more damage than they did before, basically. Um, but they also make you immune to elemental ailments, so that's really nice. It means I can run, you know, all of these flasks without having to worry about freezes or shocks or anything like that. Um, oh, yeah. Pantheons are actually pretty nice on this build because um, I don't get hit very recent, very often, so this Gorgon uh, Solaris Pantheon, it's like 8% reduced alley damage taken, that's pretty good. Um, another thing I did with this character is I have 25% reduced reflect damage taken from Yugle, and then I also have, on the tree, I have 10%, um, and then I also anointed Ash, Frost, and Storm, so that that's 20%, and then I carry around the Silas Lament Ring, and all of that together means I can run Ellie Reflect maps, and since I can run Ellie Reflect maps, I can run every map, uh, any map. So that's pretty nice. I can just, like, vol and not even look and run that map, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, pretty basic character. Oh, I guess I can show off my links, too. Let's see, you've got Charge Dash, Ellie Damage with Attacks, Crit Strikes, Cold Damage, Pulverize is nice for the AoE, and Fortify is nice for the defenses, and then you've got the Fall Double Strike set up for single target, uh, Stormbrand also for single target. Um, this isn't really very important, really, I mostly used it for the Culling Strike. Um, the auras I'm running are Blood and Sand, Precision, Arctic Armor, because I've got Perfect Form, so that gives you free um, Arctic Armor, so I'm running that. It's a nice little bit of mitigation. And Hatred. Uh, I've got a cast on damage taken steel skin cold snap setup. Um, and then I've got Vol Ancestral War Chief. We've got our smoke mine set up here and portal. Uh, that's really about it. Um, I can show you the passive tree, but yeah, this, this is a basic character. Like you take the idea of cold conversion charge dash raider, and this is prob probably where you end up most of the time. So um, yeah. Mostly I just wanted to show that Charge Dash is, like, decent and fun to play. So, you know, maybe try it if you're looking for something different. I've heard a lot of complaints of people being like, ah, every build is the same, you just run to the next screen and press right-click and run to the next screen and press right-click. But this is a little different because you're, like, moving around and dealing damage while you move and you have to aim and just has some, some unique mechanics, which, like I said, I covered in, in another video. So anyway, if this looks appealing to you, you know, try it out. I'll put the POB in the video description, and uh, good luck.